Welcome to EC Elimu Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to discuss the effect of rotation of mirrors through an angle and specifically in this video we will consider rotation in clockwise direction. Then later we will discuss rotation in anticlockwise direction and we will see its effects. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain the effect of rotation of a mirror on a reflected ray and then finally using a ray diagram and the laws of reflection, you prove that when a mirror is rotated at an angle theta, then the reflected ray will rotate twice the angle of rotation of the mirror. So if you have a mirror, call it M1, it's horizontal like that. And on this horizontal line, we have a line which is called a normal line, which is 90 degrees to this mirror. Then if we have a source of light which will give us a, 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 an incident ray I, we have a source which will give us incident ray I. So this is the source of light, let's say the sun. It's going to give us an incident ray I, which will form an angle to the normal, which is angle of incidence. And now when this incident ray hits the point of incidence and the mirror, it will be reflected. It will be reflected and it will give us reflected ray. Let's call it reflected ray not. Reflected ray not. And in this case, the angle of reflection to the normal will be also R. And remember we said uh, for reflection, I is equals to R. This is very important in this case. Then now, if we make a rotation on this mirror in such a way that the point of incidence is kept constant. The only thing that we will do is lifting this mirror on the left hand side. We just lift it like that and it rotates at an angle, call it theta. Now what will happen? We have to draw a normal to this new position of the mirror. And if this was the, our new normal was not, if you, any not, and if you look at this angle which will be formed now will not be 90 after the mirror has rotated then this normal also has to move. This normal has to move in such a way that now we will have a line which forms 90 degrees to this mirror. Let's call it N1. So N1 will move through an angle theta so that it now forms an angle which is 90 degrees to the new position of the mirror. And if it moves like that, then it means we will have our new angle of incidence. New angle of incidence, remember, since the source of light is from the sun, the sun has not moved, then now here we'll have an angle of incidence from this point to this point, which will be equal. Remember, the first angle of incidence here was I, and we have added theta, so it will be I plus theta. Then now, since we follow the laws of reflection, angle of incidence, in this case, I plus theta, should always be equal to the angle of reflection. So it means the reflected ray has to move in such a way that now the angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of reflection. And if the reflected ray moves, let's say it moves through this angle here, call it X, then it means now the angle of incidence, which is I plus theta, will also be equal on this side. It will be the same as this angle here, I plus theta. And then now what we are going to realize, this angle here, X, this angle X through which this reflected ray move from R0 to R1 is going to be twice the angle at which this mirror was rotated. So in this case, our angle X is going to be 2 times theta, the angle through which this uh, uh, mirror rotated, and we are going to prove that. So in this case, our X is, going, is equals to be 2 theta. So if you are given an, uh, an angle through which a mirror is rotated, and you are told to determine the angle through which reflected ray will rotate, it will be twice the angle through which the mirror rotated. We are going to prove this shortly. So we are going to prove the idea that we have just discussed, that when a mirror is rotated, the reflected ray will rotate or will turn twice the angle through which the mirror 
is rotated. And in this case, we are going to consider a mirror. This is our mirror here, M1, which is lying on a horizontal surface. And on this mirror, we have a normal line. Let's say this is our normal uh, line, which forms 90 degrees. Let's call it N0. It forms 90 degrees to the mirror. And if we have a source of light, which will give us an incident ray, a source of light which is going to give us an incident ray I, which will form the angle of incidence I, and then this ray, when it hits the point of incidence, it will be reflected. When it gets reflected, it will form an angle R, but for the purpose of this uh, part, I is the same as R, so we will not be wrong by saying this is also I. So now, the reflected ray that has been formed, let's call it R0. Then now, if we have to rotate this mirror, we can rotate this mirror, let's use a red pen now to rotate. If you lift this mirror on this side once, say that this mirror rotates at an angle theta, and the point of incidence is kept constant. So here we are going to have a new position of the mirror. Let's call it M2. And the angle through which this mirror has rotated is theta. This angle here is theta, or let me draw or let me indicate it using a different ink. It has rotated through an angle theta. Now, when it rotates through an angle theta, then it means we need to have a new normal, a line which will make 90 degrees to this mirror because this N knot cannot form now 90 degrees to this mirror, our new mirror. So we will have, we will be forced to have our new normal, let's call it N1, which now forms 90 degrees to this mirror. And if we have now N1 which forms 90 degrees to this mirror, then it means if we lifted this uh, mirror through an angle theta, then this normal also has to move the same angle. This one will also be same as the theta, the angle which the mirror rotated for it to form 90. Then in this case, if we know that, then now we will have our new angle of incidence. Our new angle of incidence will be this one from the incident uh, uh, ray to the new normal, this angle. Remember, the incident ray does not change because the source of light has not moved. So now we will have our new angle of incidence here from the incident ray to the uh, new normal, that is N1, and this angle will be the same as I. Remember, the first one was I, this angle here, I, then plus the theta, which the normal has moved. So now the new normal will be, or the new angle of incidence will be I plus theta. This is, will be our new angle of incidence. If this is our new angle of incidence, then it means the angle of incidence from the loss of reflection is the same as the angle of reflection. Now, the angle of reflection in this case, it will also need to change so that it be equal to the angle of incidence. So this ray, this, uh, in this reflected ray will have to shift also. The reflected ray need also to shift from R0 to a new position. Let's call it R1. Now, what we will be looking at is this angle through which this reflected ray will rotate from R0 to R1. Let's call it X. That's what we are going to look at. But remember, the law of reflection says the angle of incidence, now the new angle of incidence in this case is I plus theta, then the angle of reflection also will be equals from this new normal to the new reflected ray. It will be this one, which will also be equals to I plus theta. So this angle will also be equal to I plus theta. The angle from the new normal, N1 to R1. Now, since we know that, and we are now looking for angle X, how can we find angle X? Look at this. How can we find X? For us to find X, we need the angle from N1 to R1. Then we subtract the angle between N1 and RO. Are we able to find the angle between N1 and RO, this, one, this angle here? Are we able... To determine this angle because if we need um, x we need to get r1 to n1 then we subtract n ro to n1 
So we need this angle here. Now, what is the angle between N1 and RO? Look at this. In, in, previously, in the black, you look at the black lines. Between N1, not N1, NO to RO, it was equals to I. This angle was equals to I because I was equals to R, and this side we said we cannot be wrong by saying I is equals to I. So the angle between NO and RO is I. Then now the angle between NO and N1 is theta. So for us to find the angle between RO and N1, we will take I, the whole angle, subtract uh, N1 to NO, we subtract this theta. So this angle here, it will be I minus theta. The angle between RO and N1 is I minus theta. Now, since we have the angle between RO and N1, and then we need the angle X here, then we will take angle between R1 to R1, N1, then we subtract the angle between uh, N1, RO. Now, in this case, R1, N1, the angle between R1 and N1 is I plus theta. Then the angle between R N1 and RO, N1 and RO is I minus theta. I minus theta. Then in this case now, it will give us the angle X. So X is equals to I plus theta minus into bracket I minus theta. Then now if you solve this one, it will be x is equals to i plus theta, negative times positive minus i, then negative times negative, it will be plus theta. Now in this case, x is going to be i, like terms together, minus i plus theta plus theta. Then now i minus i is zero, so our x is going to be zero plus two theta. Now x is equals to be two theta. So as you can see, the angle through which um, the refracted ray moves from RO to R1, which we, in this case we have given as X, is going to be 2 theta. And we can prove that by just using the laws of reflection. So let's do a few questions so that we understand better. The question reads, a mirror is rotated through an angle of 10 degrees. Through what angle does the reflected ray rotate? So in this case, the theta where the mirror is rotated is 10 degrees. Then now they are asking through what angle does the reflected ray rotate? So as usual, as we have said, the reflected ray X will rotate at an angle X, which will be the same as to the angle through which the mirror will rotate. So in this case, our X is going to be 2 times theta, which is 10 or degrees, which is going to give us 20 degrees. So if you rotate a mirror at an angle of 10, the reflected ray will rotate at an angle of 20 uh, degrees. So another question reads, a mirror is rotated through a certain angle and the reflected ray turned through 35 degrees. So in this case, we are given X, which is 35 uh, degrees. Then they are asking what angle had the mirror been rotated? We are looking for theta. Then in this case, we write our formula. X is equals to 2 theta. Then in this case, we have X as 35 degrees is equals to 2 theta. Then now we divide by 2 on both sides. If we divide by 2 on both sides like this, then now 2 will go. Then we will remain with our theta is equals to 35 degrees divided by 2. And this one will give us theta is equals to 17.5 degrees. So it means this mirror was rotated 17.5 degrees. Then the reflected ray turned twice, which is at 35.0 uh, degree. Now the last question, since everything has now turned simple, I'm going to leave it as an assignment, assignment for my students. 
and then you try it if you get any challenge feel free to visit ECLEMU learning simplified or you ask a question uh, below this video link then we will be able to respond as soon as possible that marks the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss rotation of mirrors in anti-clockwise direction